The second thing would be nice to take photographs of them and then see what they look like and learn about them. Well, let's see what happens when we do that. This is what happens when you take trails, pictures of trails of beta particles. Beta particles we now know are just electrons, negatively charged particles, and as they come shooting out into the magnetic field, the magnets turn them. But they keep moving as they turn, so they end up going in this spiral, as you see in this beautiful picture. Now Rutherford has told us there's more than one type, there's the alphas as well. Let's see what alphas look like. Now, alphas look very different. What this picture here is showing, at the bottom, we've got a source of alpha particles, and the atoms in that source are spontaneously breaking down, and as they do so, shoot out alphas. Any direction. Some shoot out here, another one shoots out on the other side. But what you notice is, it doesn't matter which direction they go, they always seem to reach the same distance. Now, what's going on? Because Rutherford realized that that regularity, the fact they always went the same distance, was important. And it was something that he could put to use. So the first question he had to sort out was, why do they go the same distance? Well, let's think what's happening. An alpha particle shoots out. Now, the alpha particle is much smaller than an atom, a little thing. And it's confronted by this huge crowd, like I am. And it bumps into them and gets slowed down until it comes to a stop. Once it comes to a stop, no more trail. They always get the same distance bumping through the crowd because they always start off with the same speed. That's the key here. This source always ejects alpha particles with the same speed. And at this moment, Rutherford realized he was onto something because he had got a source of little bullets always coming out with the same speed, which he could use. And the second thing was, he knew that they had positive charge because he'd seen which way they went when you put very powerful magnets on here. And with that, Rutherford decided he could answer the big question of what are atoms made of. Now, why are we caring about atoms at this point? What's special about atoms? After all, we might have thought at the end before that <coughs> atoms were the, the last layer in the cosmic onion, peeling deep down into matter. But no. It was already known at the start of the century that negatively charged electrons exist inside atoms. In fact, in every atom of your body, there are negatively charged electrons. And the number of atoms in your body is one followed by 27, 28 zeros behind it. And yet, apart from your magnetic personalities, there isn't any sort of leftover magnetism there. There's no leftover electrical charge on you. So there must be some positive charges in you as well exactly balancing out the negatives to leave nothing overall. And that must be true in each and every atom of your body. So immediately, we know that atoms can't be the end of the road. They've got something inside, negative charges and positive charges. So the big question was, where are they? Where's the positive charges? How are they spread around? How could we know? Well, the idea that came to Rutherford was to use those little alpha particles as a way of answering the question. Let's look at the two possibilities that were around. One was that the positive charges are distributed all over the atom, as in this picture here, the negatives and positives everywhere. If that was the way things were, when you shoot a positive alpha particle at it, it will go just straight through, it hardly meets any resistance at all. Let's suppose the other picture was that the positives were clumped tightly in the center of the atom. What would happen then? Well, here's what would happen. If you made a direct hit, your alpha would bounce off. In fact, if you really hit it head on, you'd be really lucky, it would come straight back. So these are the sort of possibilities that you could use the alpha particles as bullets to distinguish. Are atoms uniformly or concentrated in their positive charge? So that's what we're going to do now, and let's take the second example to see what would happen when you start doing this sort of experiment. So what we've set up here on the table is a sort of topological map of the uh, positive charge concentrated in the center, and what we're going to do is to fire some positive alpha particles at it and see what happens. 
Can I have a volunteer to fire some alpha particles around? Would you like to? Hello, what's your name? Aileen. Aileen. Right, Aileen. What I'm just going to ask you to do, in your own time as you like, just put balls in here and fire them at that and I'll see what happens. That's pretty good. See if you can make a dead hit by moving this, if you like. Okay, put a ball in. Down it comes. Pretty good. You see, it got deflected quite a bit. Try another one. See, getting nearer, a very sharp deflection. Let's see what happens next time. 90 degrees, it's gone right off sideways. A little bit more and you might make the dead hit. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So what you're seeing here is what happens when you fire positively charged particles, the alpha particles, those little ball bearings, towards a centre of positive charge at the middle of the atom, if that's what it was like. They would get deflected very violently if they got near in the centre, a bit less violently if they pass on the edge. The second idea of this, of course, is that the alphas are like bullets that you're actually going to fire at things and see what happens. So now what we're going to do is to look at what would happen when you fire the alpha particles as bullets. Can I have a volunteer to do that? Did you come down? What's your name? Where do you come from? Manchester. Amazing. Because everybody thinks that Rutherford did this in Cambridge. And he didn't. All the books tell you he did this in Cambridge. He did it in Manchester. Fantastic. <laughs> now, <laughs> over there is this positive charge. And here is a gun full of positive alpha particles. Now, what I want you to do is to hold this as you feel comfortable, point it at that, see if you can make some strikes. And if you're managing to make some strikes, just spray it around a bit. Let's see what happens when you fire at the atom. Let's go. Say go. Go. Thank you. Well, that was pretty good. Who wants to do it again? <laughs> Would you like to have a go? What's your name? Right, Hannah. OK, you do the same thing, exactly the same as before. Come over here and hold it how you feel comfortable. Do you, which side do you like to hold it from? This side's best for you, is it? Now, wait a moment. I'm going to take cover. I'm now going to play the role of Rutherford. I'm going to detect the things and see what happens when you fire. OK, in your own time. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I got one. So if this is exactly what the atom was like, when you get a strong hit, there would be a strong bound sideways. Whereas if the atom were just the positive charges distributed everywhere, the red ping pong balls would just go shooting straight through the alpha particle bullets would just go straight through. There'd be nothing really to affect them. So here we've got a way of seeing what atoms really are like. And what my colleagues at the Rutherford Appleton Lab in Oxfordshire have done is to build an exact replica of a genuine alpha particle scattering experiment such as Rutherford himself might have done, or at least his assistant Geiger might have done. Geiger, the same Geiger as in the Geiger counter, by the way. <laughs> 